Good afternoon. Welcome to all of the alumni who are joining us for this third Thursday conversation. We're very glad that you've come today. I'm Janine Birchie Johnson, and one of my roles here at AMBS is as Director of Alumni. We've been doing these uh, third Thursday conversations uh, since the beginning of the school year last year. This year, we just did them this spring, and today is the last one of this series, and we plan to continue them in the fall, and I'll say a bit about that at the end. Just a couple of housekeeping details before we get started. If you would like to introduce yourself, please send a chat to all, to everyone, not just to the panelists, and uh, say your name and uh, what years you were at AMBS and maybe where you are now, if you'd like to do that. If you have any technical concerns during the webinar, please send a chat message to the AMBS webinar host. And then if you have a comment or question for our speaker, I ask you to use the Q&A feature, which you'll find if you hover at the bottom of your screen and you can type your question there and I'll be watching for those questions and comments and I'll select the ones that we um, give to Carl. Uh, please note that the webinar, including the questions is being recorded. So turning now to our conversation, Carl Stutzman is Director of Library Services at AMBS. He began working at AMBS in 2008 as Assistant Director for Digital Library Services and received a Master of Library Science degree from Indiana University in 2009. He's been active in ATLA, the American Theological Library Association, and he chaired its Emerging Technology Interest Group. In 2013, he was selected to attend the Wabash Center Teacher and Learning Colloquy for Theological School Librarians. Boy, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Carl earned a certificate in theological studies from AMBS in 2016 and became our library director in July, 2016. Carl will start by answering several questions that I have for him. And then after that, we'll have time for whatever questions and comments you want to share. And please do share those throughout the webinar using the Q&A. Thank you for joining us, uh, Carl. What would you like to tell us about yourself as an introduction? Yeah, so as you mentioned, Janine, I've been here at AMBS for almost 14 years and time has really flown by. Um, I'm really grateful to Eileen Sainer, um, who, was our library director here for 30 years before retiring uh, for bringing me on uh, to the library. Um, and it's been a remarkable opportunity to grow and change um, personally, professionally, spiritually. Um, so yeah, I'm immensely grateful uh, for AMBS and the place that it's been for me over these years. Um, Personally, I'm married to an AMBS alum, Twyla Epstutzman, who graduated um, early in the 2000s. Um, and we have three kids. Our oldest was a baby when I started at AMBS and he's uh, finishing middle school now. So um, yeah, we live by the Elkhart River and uh, enjoy outdoor activities together. So yeah, that's, a little bit more about me. Um, and Janine, what's what's our next question? Well, one of the questions that I've been asking everyone is uh, if you can tell us a story about uh, a time when you experienced God in a powerful way. Yeah, so um, I often fail to recognize God's work except in hindsight. Um, but in recent years, I was uh, really carried by God through a dark time of depression um, in which I felt like I was a fraud and a failure as a Christian, um, among other things. And so it, it really helped to have uh, community around me, to have AMBS, to have my family, um, and also help from doctors and therapists and people like that. Um, so I really feel like I was carried by God through that 
uh, time. And um, yeah, there's amazing uh, resources out there for that journey. Um, so um, yeah, I also learned in a deeper and fresher way how much grace there is for me, uh, despite all of my shortcomings. Um, and that is um, really an incredible learning and growth for me in the past few years. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering if you uh, can remember what drew you to the AMBS community? What attracted you here? Yeah, so um, I really, really liked um, that AMBS was building a green library. Um, that was a big draw for me um, at first. Um, I was a, at Goshen College back in the day. Um, and I worked in the Goshen College Library for a number of years after graduation. I also took classes at AMBS right after finishing up at Goshen College um, and really appreciated the AMBS community and the kinds of deeper engagement with Anabaptist history and theology and biblical studies that went on here. Um, so the invitation from Eileen to come and work in a brand new LEED certified library was a total no brainer uh, to me at AMBS. Um, and so I, um, yeah, I'm really, really grateful for the chance to work here. I go to other theological libraries, um, other college and university libraries, and am always grateful that I work in the library where I work. Um, I am very rarely envious. Yes, we have a wonderful, wonderful facility and resources in it. Yeah. Um, what kinds of projects are you working on this year? Or if you could just even give us kind of a description of what your work life includes and involves. Uh, what's a typical week like for you or a not typical week? Um, just what are you doing as director of library services? Yeah, so I'm not sure there is a typical week, um, but I do have the latest project that came my way is uh, figuring out what we do next uh, after my colleague Brandon Board uh, leaves AMBS at the end of the month. So I've really appreciated support from our Dean, Bev Lapp, um, and in processing what happens next. Um, so that's, yeah, that's a current project. Um, we'll, Miss Brandon a whole lot, um, but I'm I'm excited about uh, the ways AMBS will provide new opportunities for our library. Um, so I also um, do a lot of supporting students with their research and writing. Um, it may be as simple as someone coming by and saying hey, what's a good commentary on uh, Matthew or whatever, um, or as complicated as uh, someone wanting to process what their uh, thesis should be for their paper. Um, I really, really enjoy those kinds of engagements um, and especially seeing students grow over their time here at AMBS. Um, early on in the program, we assess them for their information literacy skills, uh, meaning the apparatus of their papers, um, and then work with students who need additional assistance over their time here. Um, and that's been really, really rewarding. Um, I also uh, engage with faculty 
um, in different ways. I was uh, just asked to do another workshop for a class um, by a teaching faculty member. And I enjoy those kinds of things too, the collaboration around collection development, uh, which is somewhat unique here in that we have faculty driven collection development. Um, these relationships in the AMBS community are so precious to me. Um, and I think that's what keeps me coming back over time is those connections that are being made here. Um, another really exciting thing is all of the students that we have around the world, uh, including a strong contingent in Ethiopia. So being able to have Zoom meetings with them and uh, explain things about the library, do troubleshooting, do uh, research assistance, um, writing assistance uh, is a really great opportunity for me to learn uh, and grow. Uh, we also have a strong contingent of international students here on campus, which you maybe know about. Um, and that includes student workers here in the library. So developing relationships internationally, cross-culturally uh, is really, really a lot of fun. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm working at. Um, I really hope um, that we can do some more digital collections work in the next year. Um, you may be familiar with a few projects that we have done in the past that we want to build on, including our digital Mennonite periodicals project um, that continues to grow by slight amounts. Um, there are uh, new periodicals coming online um, every so often. And then um, we also have the, we work collaboratively on all of these digitization projects with other Anabaptist Mennonite institutions, um, bringing on uh, more Institute of Mennonite Studies publications, um, bringing on um, online the Biblioteca Digital Anabautista which is a Spanish language uh, theological library, uh, which also continues to grow little by little. Um, and I have some other projects in mind um, that we may be working with others on uh, going forward. Um, we are grateful for partnerships with Goshen College and the Mennonite Historical Library there as well as the Mennonite Church USA archives for working on some of these projects with us uh, and various other partners as well. Um, so we're never alone when we do this stuff. And um, I would also say that library collaboration uh, is something that really engages me. Um, we collaborate with library partners, uh, as Janine mentioned through ATLA, um, and through Poundly, the private academic library network of Indiana. And without those networks of librarians, uh, we would be able to do very little around here. Uh, we rely heavily on library collaboration. I'm going to ask you just to push that out a little bit more, Carl. Tell us, what is Poundly? How does it work? How does it serve our students? How do we resource other libraries around the state? Uh, yeah. Just give us a description of Palney and then also say a bit about your roles with them. Yeah. So Palney started out uh, in the early 90s um, as a library automation group um, that facilitated AMBS getting an online library catalog and even getting uh, internet on campus. Eileen uh, was a huge uh, leader in Palney getting started and bringing Palney to AMBS. So uh, she gets credit for that role. Um, and Palney over time has emerged uh, in new ways as a place of deeper and deeper collaboration among the library staff at each, each institution uh, to create 
uh, teams that work on each other's behalf through work on digital collections or uh, work in electronic resources management, the links to the various electronic resources in our collections, um, or work on cataloging, um, or work on um, scholarly communication, um, the cycle of faculty publishing things. Um, so Poundley's work um, really extends our uh, ability to have expertise in the variety, wide variety of things that librarians need to know about these days. Um, and so we can have deep expertise at other schools and build on that, draw on that uh, here at AMBS. Um, and at the same time, as Janine mentioned, we can lend our expertise to others uh, through this collaboration. Um, one of the ways that I'm involved uh, in Palney is as a member of the Palney board, each of the library directors at each of the 23 institutions across the state of Indiana uh, that are part of Palney uh, seminaries, uh, colleges, universities, ranging in size from, um, you know, less than a thousand to uh, tens of thousands of students. Uh, we don't have the really big schools, uh, but we have kind of the medium sized ones. Anyway, um, I serve on the board of directors with all of those folks, and I am also on a task force for Palney that's doing uh, future visions work for the organization, looking at uh, changing demographics in our uh, supported schools and how we're going to deal with that uh, strategically, uh, how we're going to communicate the value of libraries um, in an era of uh, likely diminishing resources and shifting models for higher education. Um, so libraries continue to be really important as we shift our understandings of how education happens, uh, but librarians are not very good at telling our own story. Um, we like to be behind the scenes. Um, we like to go about our business and help people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we don't like to market ourselves. We don't like to say we're great. Um, and yet librarians are some of the glue that holds the academic uh, endeavor together um, because without our work, people couldn't get access to the resources that they need to write and read for classes. Um, so we see the hollowing out of libraries um, as institutions change, and that can be really alarming. Um, so yeah, advocacy around those kinds of matters is something that I contribute to Palney. Um, I, um, we also contribute expertise in library systems. I've been involved in that in the past. Um, and one thing that's been said by leaders of the larger libraries of Palney even is that they feel like um, AMBS makes an outsized contribution to the organization um, by providing leadership and expertise, uh, even though we're really, really small. Uh, we're the smallest institution in Pali, um, but we're a highly valued partner. Thank you. And can you go ahead and explain ATLA as well and how it's different and what yeah. readings we get from there? Yeah, so one thing I failed to mention from Pali is that we have a really important program called Pal Share which means sending the books around that we find in our shared catalog. Um, and that's the direct 
connection that most of our students and faculty know about. Um, there's a lot happening behind the scenes to make the library work, um, but that's a really visible program uh, that everybody relies on. Um, so that's, we can't talk about pounding without Pelsha. Um, and so if, if I had a book that I wanted that was not in the AMBS library connect collection, but it was at Notre Dame, you would notify Notre Dame and then a courier would bring the book or right. Okay. Yeah. We have and a daily library courier that brings books actually from any library across the state. So it's a really cool service that gives us a lot of access. Um, yeah. So talking about ATLA, um, that's a, a different kind of organization in terms of geographic scope. Um, it's actually moving in the direction of becoming a more uh, worldwide global uh, organization. Um, the primary way that you may know ATLA is as the provider of a library database. Um, which you incidentally all have access to as alumni. Um, we have a program where you can get a username and password to access the ATLA database and search for articles based on scripture texts, um, in particular journals, um, and get the full text of those articles uh, right at your fingertips. Um, so ATLA, in addition to having a really awesome database uh, that is always growing and um, including more journals from around the world, um, is also a membership organization of theological librarians, theological and religious studies librarians, um, primarily in North America, uh, but increasingly um, in other places too and networked with people in other places. So it provides a lot of really rich connections um, ecumenically. Uh, I get to rub shoulders with, um, you know, from everyone from the fundamentalists to um, the people who aren't necessarily Christian, um, to Catholics, to Orthodox, to, um, yeah, on and on. There's um, a lot of richness in those relationships. We could disagree on everything theologically uh, and be passionate about that, um, but we embrace each other as brothers and sisters in theological librarianship. Um, so it's, it's, that's a really cool organization. ATLA gives us the opportunity to have free interlibrary loans uh, between these libraries, which have really remarkable collections that are deep in their own areas. Um, so we get quite a bit through that. That's a direct benefit. There's a reciprocal borrowing program that enables our distant students to go to a library near them and gain access. Um, it's, it also uh, resources us as librarians in terms of professional development, uh, being aware of trends, uh, being aware of technology. Um, and so we're up on the latest happenings in the databases, the latest happenings in um, library administration for me or uh, what have you. So um, yeah, thoughts about strategic planning or um, other kinds of things going on in the world of libraries. Uh, that's our source for how to be better theological librarians. Um, just to follow up a bit, um, Eileen Sainer has, has uh, asked a couple or, you know, suggested a couple things that you might say a little bit more about and maybe you have now uh, explained these well enough but how does the library catalog allow people to request materials from other libraries and how does that affect how AMBS spends its library budget 
And then she's also uh, mentioned the library guide for alumni, which you have touched on a bit. Do you wanna say a little bit more about those things? Yeah, so um, the Pauli, Pauli provides us still with a library catalog that automates our library uh, circulation system that facilitates discovery. And a really cool thing about that, I talked about PalShare, which is the way that we gain access to these books from other collections, the practical side of it. The technological side of it that makes it possible is the um, catalog system itself, which allows us to see results from um, that are kind of tiered. The first tier is the results that come from our library uh, collection. The next tier is results that come from other Pauli libraries. And the third tier is actually libraries around the world. Um, so at any of those tiers, there are options to request things um, and or immediately grab them if you happen to be here in Elkhart. Um, or connecting remotely to, um, to our collections for students and faculty. Um, and we have been able to um, really focus on our specialties because we have such ready access to other library collections. Um, so we have leaned into purchasing some obscure materials in biblical studies um, that our faculty really uh, dig. And we can provide those to other libraries um, as well as our library. So we know that they have um, a trajectory of getting use. Um, at the same time, uh, we can rely on another library to get something specialized in a different interdisciplinary area. Um, and as our faculty do more and more interdisciplinary work, um, particularly the peace studies program is really interdisciplinary with sociology and political science and things like that. Uh, so we can be sure of being able to get things in those areas and not have just a shallow collection in that area just because we need something, uh, we know that we have access to deeper collections in those areas from other libraries. So it enables us to target our spending to the things that we're really good at um, and contribute more to the library community uh, and to our people here. So. And An another related question is that I want to talk at some point here about the resources for alumni. I've touched on that a little bit, um, but yeah, I, um, I would like to share my screen and show you some things that we have done actually for many years. Um, Eileen started these things for us and they're so well appreciated that we um, must continue them. Um, so yeah, I'm going to share my screen here and show you what we have in place. So uh, let me start here with the library website. So recently, uh, AMBS is marketing. Oh, you're probably seeing my, are you seeing my screen? We are, we're seeing the library homepage. Perfect, perfect. It doesn't have a little circle around it like it usually does, so I was worried. Um, the AMBS marketing department recently worked really hard to bring our total AMBS website up to speed. Um, so, I am really appreciative to them for making our library's website look really good. Um, they found beautiful pictures of our library to put on our website. Um, they integrated our various resources and actually our um, website person is a current student. So he knows how valuable our resources are. 
Um, and a neat thing that they did in the process of putting our website up was give a tour video uh, of our library. So you can virtually tour our library um, through our website and see some of the neat things about our facility and collections. Um, if you keep scrolling down, you can find uh, a link to our alumni resources. So if you ever forget how to get to our alumni page, uh, this is the link to go to it. Um, if you happen to be in the local Elkhart area, you are more than welcome to come in and use our resources in person. Um, we give out library cards for free um, and want people to make use of our space and collections. Uh, but we know that our alumni go everywhere. Uh, so we need to provide digital library resources for you all as well. Um, and that's what's covered on our library guide. Uh, so here is our library guide for alumni. Uh, we actually have library guides on a large number of topics. Um, and you're welcome to explore those, but this one is specifically addresses the resources that we make available to alums. Um, the, as I mentioned before, the ATLA database is a really key resource that we, uh, we actually pay a little bit of money every year for access uh, for everyone uh, to have this database. And um, it, requires a username and password. Um, we, if you send us an email, we will send you a link to the form to fill out to get a password. And I'll just show you real quick what that form looks like. Um, it's a real simple form that asks for your name and email address. And um, then we send, we have to update the password every year. Uh, so we'll send you updates on what the password is when it has to change. So it's important that you um, get signed up on our list. If you haven't uh, gotten a new password for a while, your password won't work. So um, yeah, sign up with us and we'll update you on the password. One of the neat things that's happened with the requirement to change passwords every year is that we actually get to hear from our alumni about their use of the database um, and how much they rely on it. Um, so that's been uh, the side bonus of EBSCO telling us that we have to change the password. Um, yeah, uh, it's a little. it was a little bit annoying at first, but then we, found out that we got to actually connect with people, um, which, was, which was fun. Um, back on our alumni guide, uh, it's organized to have uh, various uh, preaching and worship resources, free resources uh, in Anabaptist Mennonite topics, um, including some of the digitization projects that we, that I mentioned earlier. Um, that bring you access to say the Mennonite and Gospel Herald um, and Spanish resources, uh, several journals. Um, yeah, there's, there's a ton of stuff out there uh, and available for free. Um, so this, uh, there's a combination of resources that are free to everyone and resources that are only available to our alums. Um, but we want you to, um, yeah, have access to as much as possible. The other uh, thing that um, is available to you is contacting us as librarians for our reference services. Um, and that our information is on this guide as well. Um, we're willing to go look up things and commentaries and make scans of them for you um, and answer whatever questions might come up. Um, 
that's, um, we enjoy hearing from our alums and especially people that we've known over the years. Um, but not only that, people who have longer stories with AMBS than I do. Um, and yeah, just, just being able to fulfill a quick request um, that is easy for us, but makes a big difference for someone else. Um, I, a couple of days ago, an alum contacted me. Uh, if this is too complicated, uh, let me know. Um, but I would really like a photo of like one page of something that you have. And it's like, yeah, that's super easy. Um, and I went and did it right away. And it was so much uh, fun to be a part of something that was really important to this alum um, and actually was really easy for me to do. Um, so please don't hesitate to ask questions that even feel obscure um, because we enjoy having that interaction and that ability to help. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a little bit about uh, what we provide to alumni. Um, and we really value uh, the various ways that you're engaged in uh, different kinds of ministries and want to come behind you to resource you in that work. Thank you, that's awesome. Um, another question I have for you is uh, if you have any current research interests, are there things that you are pushing out your own uh, knowledge of? Yeah, so um, my most recent kind of research passion is around uh, the area of critical librarianship and bringing that into conversation with theological librarianship. Uh, critical librarianship um, is the is a kind of emerging field that seeks to listen more carefully to marginalized perspectives in librarianship, um, name historic inequalities, and undo various forms of oppression within the library space. Um, and I think that theological librarianship has a lot to learn from uh, critical approaches to librarianship. And this connects with um, my passion for undoing oppression within the space of our seminary. Um, and learning from uh, the various intercultural um, opportunities that we have. Um, so one of the things I've been doing, um, as well as this uh, integration of critical librarianship and theological librarianship is working as an IDI uh, qualifying Administrator, uh, Intercultural Development Inventory, uh, which we do here on a regular basis at AMBS. So I get to have lots of intercultural conversations with people. Um, so this has really fired me up to, to work more at addressing historic inequalities and, um, and working at issues of oppression that get in the way of having rich cultural um, and social exchanges. Um, so one of the things about theological librarianship is that uh, it is wider than regular librarianship, which is already pretty white. Um, it, um, so it skews in, a, in kind of the opposite direction of uh, what we might want. Um, and by wider, I mean uh, not just um, skin color, um, but also kind of the overarching concept of whiteness, of normative ways of being um, that 
reinforce uh, Western, uh, Northern European kinds of ways of being um, and privilege um, the patriarchal, heteronormative, um, all of those kinds of uh, understandings of um, what is normal um, in our society. Um, so undoing that within the space of theological librarianship is, is pretty important to me. Um, I do have a upcoming poster presentation at the ATLA conference that I'm not quite ready for uh, on this intersection of theological librarianship and critical librarianship. So I'm working at that. Um, I'm also uh, in the process of publishing an article um, in the journal Theological Librarianship on understandings of theological librarianship as a vocation. Um, there is a really interesting article in the critical librarianship space on how um, our understandings of vocation can actually be a uh, impediment to justice in employment conditions um, and, and encourage overwork and underpay and, um, and I think in theological librarianship, we have an even more elevated sense of vocation than um, in general, in the general field. Um, and does that, I sort of pose the question, does that actually work against us as uh, library professionals in theological schools? Um, I think it might, and I think it might uh, get in the way of our uh, diversity as well, um, because people from more marginalized backgrounds uh, suffer disproportionately from these sorts of uh, things. So, um, yeah, I would be, I could sit here and talk for way too long about this. Um, but it, it really gets me fired up uh, to think about um, how to bring more justice uh, to these spaces. Um, yeah, so I appreciate the leadership of AMBS in uh, identifying these sorts of issues and addressing them through our ICUR, Intercultural Competence and Undoing Racism team. Um, and I'm just always inspired by the ways AMBS is providing leadership in a variety of spaces around um, the trajectory of God Shalom. Thanks. Um, coming to the end of the questions I have, so if others want to add more to the Q&A, please do. But um, what's a dream you have for AMBS? And then after we, after you answer that one, we'll, we'll see what questions you have for our alumni. Yeah, that's a great segue, Janine, because my dream is that AMBS will just keep on being this incubator uh, for this Shalom work um, that is so um, so important um, in a world that is hurting in so many ways. Um, and I feel like as a really, really small school um, in a really small religious tradition, we've had an outsized impact on um, our faith tradition, uh, in terms of um, calling Christians to be more intentional about discipleship and um, working toward peace at, and understanding peace broadly. 
Um, so I want us to uh, continue to do that, to not hide our uh, light under a, a bushel um, and to sort of boldly claim our impact uh, out there. Um, in our various circles, like the ATLA circles, um, I hear a lot of respect for what we're doing here at the seminary. So in other uh, theological and religious studies schools, what we put out there has an impact. Um, so this um, tiny little place, really does matter. And I hope that we can really claim that. Thanks. And what questions do you have for the alumni who've joined us today? Yeah, I have a whole bunch um, <laughs> and I'll throw them out there and you can answer the ones that uh, maybe engage you. Um, so first off, um, what was the most helpful thing our library did for you as a student? Um, as a, like, how do we set priorities for our current students? What, what was most important to you? Um, the second question is what kinds of resources do you need for your various ministries? Um, what else could we provide for you? Um, and then, how have theological research and writing impacted your preaching, teaching, evangelism, and peacemaking? So what is that connection between what we do in research and writing at seminary and the, those roles as practitioners? Um, and finally, um, were there practices that sustained you in your studies and now in your uh, various ministries that um, the library could facilitate and promote for our students. Um, I like to tell students that uh, research and writing are embodied activities um, and that it's important to attend to our um, bodies as we do this intense work. Um, so yeah, what what kinds of things in that realm uh, might we want to promote as a library? So you don't have to answer any of the questions, <laughs> definitely not all of them, um, but I'm curious about a lot of things. Yeah, I've put those questions in the chat and if you'd like to answer in the chat, that would be great. Um, and then if you have any questions for Carl, this is a time for you to go ahead and put those in the Q&A. Um, so either a response to the questions he has asked or a question or response to what he, uh, the other things he has presented. Um, Carl, I, I just want to ask a few more questions as we're waiting for the alums who have questions, but um, tell us about the bookstore being incorporated into the library and how that is working out. Yeah. So the bookstore has been a really interesting experiment for us. Um, we, over time, we have more reliance on digital periodicals than print periodicals. Um, the ATLA database is uh, a huge asset in that way uh, that we can rely on the coverage in there and we don't need as many print periodicals. So we had space opening up in the library uh, former periodicals area at the same time that the bookstore was really struggling to stay afloat financially. Um, and so we created a small bookstore area in the corner of the library. Um, and that meant that we also began managing the bookstore. Um, so um, I never trained to do retail, um, but now we're doing it in a small way. Um, and so um, we've had some neat opportunities connected to doing the bookstore that I think we wouldn't have had otherwise. 
And one of those has been the ability to do events with authors um, and to kind of cross promote new materials. Um, so one of our own, uh, David Kramer recently published a book. We had a really awesome book party with him here in the library um, and brought people into our space, sold a whole bunch of his books, um, got an interesting book talk. Um, and so that kind of opportunity has been something I've really enjoyed about the bookstore. Um, I, I will spare you the discussion of the little headaches of having a bookstore, um, but I think the, the joys of it outweigh those. Um, so yeah, it's been really, really fun. Another thing that you have um, brought to the library that you don't see in every library are things like an exercise bike with a reading uh, desk on it, um, a hammock, and some uh, balls, uh, sitting balls. Mm -hmm. um, can you say a little bit more about your thinking behind those and what you hear from students about those? Yeah, so it's what I said earlier, uh, which is that I think uh, reading is, is a whole body experience and that we need to attend to um, that. We also have some sun lamps around uh, for those dark Indiana days, even though the natural light in our library is amazing. Uh, sometimes we need an extra boost. Um, and I've picked up these ideas actually from other librarians through the networks that I mentioned. Um, and our students talk about them being not kind of their exclusive place to study, but a helpful diversion. So it may be helpful um, to spend a little bit of time on the exercise ball while they read to give themselves kind of a, a concrete break from what they're doing. Um, so we see these things kind of migrating around the library um, and people definitely spend a lot of time in the soft seating that we have and the table seating that we have but they also appreciate the chance to kind of flex around uh, with some of these other options. Um, and I think uh, this goes back to the original design of our library um, as a flexible space and as a green design space. Um, all of that design work facilitated the things that we're doing in our space now. Um, because we can move things around, because we have um, power in various places, because we have um, kind of reconfigurable spaces and beautiful spaces, we can provide these kinds of opportunities. Um, so again, Eileen gets the credit um, for all of that uh, work that happened over many, many years. Um, but we're, yeah, we're very, very fortunate to have that. Thanks. Paul Lichty has uh, uh, made a comment here. I've been using Logos Bible software recently and appreciate the ways it links to other resources. Are there ways in which electronic resources of AMBS can be linked to Logos? Thank you, Paul, for that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Logos. Uh... Theological librarians have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with Logos um, because they're, um, they're not very keen on linking in kind of resources from outside of their orbit um, into their program. And they're also not very eager to allow libraries to buy into their program. Um, so while we see the value of the products to people doing serious study, um, we have to kind of keep our distance from them because they don't want to let us in. Um, and I think that's their business model really, uh, is trying to get you to pay for add-on packages and additional materials within the their software. Um, 
so yeah, I don't have anything uh, helpful to say about what we could do with Lagos, um, other than to say that um, we often have parallel resources here in the library. Um, and there are ways that if you see a reference to something within the Lagos software that you don't have access to, you could ask us for a scan of something um, and we would be happy to help with that. Um, so yeah, I, I wish we could integrate better, um, but that's, that's the limit of, of software and their license terms and so forth. Thank yeah, thanks, Paul. Good for question. answering all these questions. And thank you to the alums who've joined us today and those who will watch this later. Um, we are really grateful to get this insight into your work, Carl. And, and I know if you if people still have questions, they can contact you directly and you'd be glad to talk with them more. Um, want to thank all of you who've joined us today for your ongoing support of AMBS. As you have heard me say many times, alumni are our most important influencers. Uh, they're valuable as supporters of prayer support, financial support, and identifying uh, new students for us. So if you have a new student that you would like to see take advantage of classes at AMBS, please contact me about that. And I also hope that you're staying connected to the seminary through our church leadership center offerings and other events. Note on our website that we have some things coming up this summer that you can be part of, as well as classes next fall that you can use your um, graduate audit uh, special rate on. Want to thank also Janet McGeary, our student uh, IT person who has provided technical support today. Um, next fall, when we come back to do um, more of the uh, third Thursday conversations, we're going to be interspersing them um, with the interviews of individuals. And, and then on other months, we're going to have uh, conversations about new programs at AMBS. So we'll have um, a webinar focus in which you will be able to see everyone on the screen and we'll have a conversation together with maybe two or three administrators at AMBS who will talk about new things that are emerging. Those include the DMIN program that we are waiting for final approval on in the beginning of June and also some exciting news out of our uh, development team about a capital campaign. So look forward to having those conversations again next year. Thank you so much for joining us today and for joining us throughout this, um, this spring season. Blessings for the rest of your day. Thank you all. <laughs>